Hello, just returned from Gen Con, had a wonderful time there, and I'm taking a look at some of the games that I picked up at Gen Con. And the game we're going to look at today is Clank. Clank is a game from 1 to 4. It's a game that was designed by Paul Denon, and it was put out by Dire Wolf and Renegade Games. And a friend of mine did a demo at Renegade Games and found out that uh, Dire Wolf and Renegade uh, were a video game company, and this is their first board game. So we're going to take a look at this game. This game has a lot going on, as you can see here, so I'm going to change the camera so that you don't have to look at my pretty face, and you can actually see a board view. Okay, now that we've got a nice top-down view of the board, I'm going to go through the initial setup for the game. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put out all the artifacts. The artifacts uh, have like a um, shape like this. And you put them in the spots that have the cutout shape just like that. They're also numbered, so you're going to want to put the numbers where the number shows on the board. So this says 25, and we're going to put 25 here. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different artifacts on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take all the tokens that look like this, you're going to mix them up, and you're going to place them on the board where we have large, these are called major secrets, and you're going to put all the large major secrets on the board. You are going to have a couple of those left over when you get done. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put out the minor secrets. They're smaller chips with the question mark on them. You're going to mix those up. You're going to place those out on the board. You place two minor chips at every location on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill the market with items. Uh, in the market you're going to have keys, you're going to have backpacks, and you're going to have crowns. And the crowns go in descending order, so 10, 9, 8. So the first person to take one will get 10 points, 9 points, and 8 points respectively. Everything in the market costs 7 gold. The next thing you're going to do is put out the monkey tokens. So you have three monkey tokens here and, the, and their pictures are represented on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set aside these master tokens. And these tokens are for anybody who escapes the dungeon during the game, actually gets a master token. They're worth 20 points. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to place all the gold out uh, on the board so that everybody can get to it. You're going to place the dragon token on the board based on the number of players. I'm going to do an example of a two-player game, so here's the dragon at the two-player spot. You're going to get the black clank tokens, and the game comes with 24 black clank tokens, and you're going to put them in the dragon bag. It comes with a bag, um, and you're going to put all those 24 tokens into the bag to start the game. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to place the goblin monster out right there. That goblin monster is a single card and he never goes away. You can always attack the goblin. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to shuffle the market deck and you're going to place out six cards into the market. And so as you can see we have one, two, three, four and a couple off the screen, five and six. So there's always six cards in the market. Um, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to give each player a pawn and they're going to put their pawn up here at the top at the starting location of the dungeon and then you're going to select your first player the book says you select the sneakiest player to go first but you could roll a dice or you can use some other kind of random way to create the first player you're also going to give each player their clank tokens so this is the red player and I've given him his clank tokens and this is the yellow player and and their clank tokens. You also give each player a starting hand of cards. So in the starting hand they're going to have six burgle cards, one scramble card, one sidestep card, two stumble cards. The players are going to mix up their decks of starting cards and they're each going to draw five cards. This five cards is going to be their starting hand. Now the object of the game is to take your pawn, move down into the dungeon, get a, an artifact. You can only get one artifact. Once you have an artifact then you can continue to get treasure if you would like. 
but once somebody decides that they're done getting treasure and they leave the dungeon with their artifact, that person gets a master token worth 20 points. And then that player no longer takes their turn as normal. They actually start moving through this area here. This area here is going to instigate the dragon and then eventually kill all the people who remain in this area of the dungeon. So if somebody is out here, then the people who are still in the depths of the dungeon, so below this green line here is the depths of the dungeon, anybody who's still in the depths of the dungeon needs to get above ground. Okay? If you're in the depths of the dungeon and one player reaches this mark on the track, then everybody in the depths of the dungeon dies. If you're in the castle, when the person reaches this point, you are knocked out, but you do not die. You do not receive a master token because you did not exit the castle, but you still get to count your points at the end of the game. So let's look at what a sample game turn would look like. So I've drawn my five cards, and in my five cards I have received two stumbles, two burgles, and one sidestep. You must play all the cards that you get on your turn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my stumbles. My stumbles are not good. That means I've stumbled around in the castle or the depths, and I've made a lot of noise. And when I make noise, I run the possibility of stirring up the dragon. So I'm going to take two of my clank because I had two stumbles and I'm going to put my clank in this location on the board right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my burgles. I have two to spin. I can use that money to buy anything in the market or any of the common cards. And so we have, as common cards, we have the Secret Tome, which is just worth points at the end of the game. It's worth seven points at the end of the game. We have the Mercenary, which allows us to buy things and to fight things. And we have the Explorer, which allows us to buy things and move. So I have two, and these blue things are called Skill. Um, we just call them money because in every other game you use them to buy things, but um, they're called skill, so I have two skill. So the cost of the cards are down here in the corner. So this card costs three, this card costs two, this card costs seven. We have a two, three, four, three in the market as well. I'm going to use my two money to buy a mercenary. Now, a mercenary is going to allow us to fight. And if you notice, in the market, there are cards that do not have a cost associated with them because the cost associated with them is fighting them. So this card would take three fight to knock out and this card would take three fight to knock out as well. So adding a mercenary to my deck is going to be advantageous to being able to knock these things out of the market. So once I've spent my money, the card that I buy goes in my discard pile. Then I'm going to use my movement. I have one movement here, so I'm going to take my character and I'm going to move him one into the dungeon. Now he has moved into a location that has nothing in it, so that would end my turn. Once I'm done playing all my cards, and you must play all your cards, you take what's left of your hand and you put it in your discard pile along with any cards that you purchase this turn. Once you're done, it goes to the next player's turn. The next player would do the same thing. Now looking at the market for a second, there's uh, three different types of cards here. There are monster cards, which require you to fight them to get them out of the market. There are device cards, which are purple, and they require you to um, use them as soon as you buy them. Okay, so the monster cards are red, the device cards are purple, and when you do use a device card, you do not put it in your hand. You immediately use it, and then you remove it into the discard pile of the market. So, let's say that I had three skill, and I was going to buy this ladder, then I would pay my three skill. That would give me two movement. I would discard ladder into the market discard pile, and I would move my unit two spaces on the board. If you defeat a monster, you would also remove that. It would not go in your hand, and it would go to the discard of the market as well. Blue cards, when you purchase them, they go into your discard pile, 
and then you get to use them when you draw them from your deck. If your deck ever becomes empty, like any other deck building game, you shuffle your discard pile and make a new deck. Once you're done taking your turn, then any cards that are empty in the market area will be replaced. You do not replace the cards in the market area until uh, you're finished with your turn. And you flip cards up from the market deck and you place them back into the market area. Some cards have an arrive effect and if you flip up on a, car a card like this that has an arrive effect then you will do what it says in the arrive area. Some cards have an acquire effect and if you take a card that has an acquire effect you do that as soon as you take the card. And then some cards have the dragon effect and as you can see this card has a dragon on it and when this card comes up in the market then you activate the dragon. So in order to activate the dragon you do a couple things. The first thing you do is you go to the clank and you take any clank that is in the clank area and you put it in the bag, in the dragon bag. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. Then you shake up the dragon bag and then you look and see where the dragon is on the dragon scale and the dragon is on the three cubes. So then you pull out three cubes from the bag and you look at them and if they're black cubes then you return them to the box. You do not put them into the bag. The black cubes are kind of like a primer to keep you a little safer at the beginning of the game but they will eventually a lot of them come out of the bag. So they will be returned to the box and nobody takes in any damage. But let's say we had pulled two cubes and a red cube out of the bag. Then the black cubes would get returned to the box, they do not get put back in the bag, and the red cube would go on the red player's life marker. If you fill up all of these areas under your color and hit this area right here, your character is knocked out. If your character is in the depths when this happens, your character dies and is out of the game. If your character is in the castle when this happens, your character is knocked out, still gets to count their points at the end of the game, but no longer plays any more rounds until the end of the game. You continue playing like this, drawing cards, drawing five cards, playing your cards until someone escapes the dungeon and moves to the final track here. So a few things about moving through the castle and the depths. First of all, if you want to move through a space that has two feet, you have to have two movement to do so. Normally you can move on one movement so on this card I have one movement so I could move here but I could not move here. I would have to have two cards or something similar to this that has two movement on it in order to be able to move through this space. If I want to move through this space this has a lock on it. The only way to move through this space is to have a key and the only way to get a key is to buy it from the market. So I could go to the market, I could buy a key, you keep that key, you don't lose it when you use it and so then you can continually use it to get through locks. So once you have a key, locks are completely open for you and you can just run through those areas. Now you're going to see that keys actually make it easier to get out because they shorten the path for a lot of the ways to get out. So having a key is beneficial. If you want to move through a spot like this, you have to fight your way through. There's a monster in that spot and you have to spend one sword to get past this area. Now, if you don't spend one sword to get past this area, you can still pass, but you have to take one damage. So let's say the red player was here and he wanted to move here and he did not have a sword in his hand to play, then he would have to place a, a cube from his pool into his life area and shorten his life. If you want to move on a space that has an arrow like this or like this, you can only move in this direction. So the yellow player could not go like this to get down here, but he could go like this to get up here. If you run into a space that has two monsters, it's the same thing. You have to either spin two swords or take two damage to get through there. You are going to find things in the 
castle and in the depths. So if my yellow player went here, he would take one of the minor secrets that's here. He would flip it over. This minor secret has two swords on it, so that means that I could actually use that for two attack. So if I wanted to go through here, I could keep this and turn this in to go through this location. If I move into a spot that has a major secret, then I take that as well. I turn it over and I do what it says. Now the book has extensive rules on all the different major secrets and minor secrets, so if you have one that you don't know what it does, you can just look at the back of the book. This one tells you to draw three cards. Once those uh, things have been taken, they, they go to the player that took them or they go back to the box, depending on what the book says, and then they're no longer there to pick up. If you go to a space, you cannot pick up both of them. If there's two, you can only pick up one, and you also have to leave the space and come back if you would like to pick up the other one. Like I said before, if you get into a location that has an artifact, you may take it, but you don't have to take it. If you get into this space and you don't want the five, because it's only worth five points at the end of the game, then you can bypass that, move on to try to get the shield that's 20 or the armor that's 25. Once you take one though, you cannot give it back and you cannot pick up another one. So once you have an artifact, it's yours and that's the artifact you have to keep. Keep in mind, you have to have an artifact to leave the dungeon. So you cannot get out without having an artifact. If you go into any one of these four locations that are attached to the market, on your turn you may buy a market card. That will cost you seven gold, so you will have to have seven gold to turn in to get a market item, and um, the market items are keys, backpacks, and crowns. Crowns give you point, the keys let you get through locks, and backpacks. A backpack lets you break the rule and lets you carry an additional artifact. So if you want to get a couple artifacts, like you're trying to keep one of your fellow players from getting artifacts, you can get a backpack, you can get two, and if uh, people get enough, then maybe there won't be one for somebody else, or you might just get a lot of points for getting two artifacts. Okay, once, you're, once you've gone into the depths and you've got an artifact and then you've decided that you want to get out and it's very strategic about when you want to get out, you start heading out. When you get out to the end, like I said before, you get a 20. You get a master token that shows that you have made it out and that's 20 points at the end of the game. On your next turn, you no longer play. You no longer buy cards or play your hand or draw cards. All you do is move your unit from here to here. Now this location doesn't do anything. It's a blank location. So on your next turn, you're going to move here. And when you move here, you're going to activate the dragon. But not only are you going to activate the dragon, you're going to add one to the number of cubes that is pulled from the bag. So at this point, you're going to look at where the dragon is, and that's three, and here you would pull four dragons. Your next turn you would go here, you would pull five dragons, here you would pull six dragons, and on your next turn you would go here, the depths and the castle would collapse, everybody in the depths would die, everybody in the castle would be knocked out, and the game would come to an end. So that's the end game condition that ends the game. A couple things to mention. Some of these secret items have dragon eggs on the back. If you find a dragon egg, and the dragon egg is worth three points at the end of the game, and you also move the dragon up one spot. So the dragon is becoming more agitated because you've taken one of their dragon eggs. Another thing to note, that when you're refilling cards in the market, if you refill the market with more cards than one that have the dragon symbol on it, the dragon only attacks once. It doesn't attack for each dragon symbol that you flip up. So once the game is over, where one player has made it to the final location, or everybody but one player has died, then we go into final scoring. Now final scoring is very easy. You just score up any major, minor secrets that have a green scoring tile on them. You add up your mastery token if you have one. You add up all of the green scoring marks on the artifacts that you found and any other treasure that you've got in the dungeon. And then you add up from your deck all the cards that have a green scoring circle 
at the top. You also add all of the gold that you have left at the end of the game, and the total of all of those things makes up your final score, and the person with the most total score, counting gold, chips, cards, is the winner of the game. If there is a tie, then the person who has the most valuable artifact is then declared the winner. So that was Clank. What did I dislike about the game? Well, there was really nothing that I disliked about the game. I played it several times with my friends, and um, every time I found it fun. Uh, I can't think of one thing that I, that I actually disliked about the game. So what did I like about the game? Well, I love the components. The components are really nice, and um, they're easy to set up. The board has lined out everywhere where everything goes, so it's really easy to get the game set up. I love the concept of putting the clank here, and then when the, and when the dragon attacks, then you put it in the bag, and then you draw from the bag. It adds a lot of tension when somebody's drawn from the bag and you're hoping that your colored cube does not come out on the table. One thing that I really, really liked about the game was that the designers actually created the insert for the game to handle sleeved cards. This, my cards are sleeved and they fit in her perfect. In fact, when I first got the game, I was kind of like, why did they make all these huge spaces for these cards? They were just kind of flopping around in there. And then after I sleeved my cards, I realized these are the perfect size for a sleeve card. So I love a company who takes the gamer into account when they're designing their product and allows them to sleeve their cards and still fit them into the insert. The insert's great. Everything fits in here. Everything works good. I'm glad that they went with cubes for the clank because they're simple. They're easy to handle, they're easy to move around. Uh, I like the money, it's nothing fancy, but they give you plenty of money to use within the game. There's enough variety in the market deck to make it interesting. We played it several times and several times I've um, been able to do different things. I love the fact that the goblin never leaves because um, when you have fight in a game, if you don't have something out there that's always out there to fight, then you end up with market cards with no fight, and you end up with a hand of junk. Well, the goblin will give you gold all the time for fighting him. So even if there's nobody in the market that can be fought, the goblin is always there for you to hit. Excellent game. Highly recommend it. The guys who made this game, super, super nice. Talked to them for a while at the booth. They did a wonderful demo for us. And um, I really, really, really recommend this game. So if you like deck builders and you like games that are a little, have a little bit of tension and you like games where you can kind of push your friends, then this is the game for you. And I highly recommend you check it out. So that's it. Until next time, happy gaming, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello. Just returned from Gen Con. Had a wonderful time there. And I'm taking a look at some of the games that I picked up at Gen Con. And the game we're going to look at today is Clank. Clank is a game from 1 to 4. It's a game that was designed by Paul Denon and it was put out by Dire Wolf and Renegade Games. And a friend of mine did a demo at Renegade Games and found out that uh, Dire Wolf and Renegade uh, were a video game company and this is their first board game. So we're going to take a look at this game. This game has a lot going on as you can see here so I'm going to change the camera so that you don't have to look at my pretty face and you can actually see a board view. Okay, now that we've got a nice top-down view of the board, I'm going to go through the initial setup for the game. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put out all the artifacts. The artifacts uh, have like a um, shape like this. And you put them in the spots that have the cutout shape just like that. They're also numbered, so you're going to want to put the numbers where the number shows on the board. So this says 25, and we're going to put 25 here. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different artifacts on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take all the tokens that look like this, you're going to mix them up, and you're going to place them on the board where we have large, these are called major secrets, and you're going to put all the large major secrets on the board. You are going to have a couple of those left over when you get done. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put out the minor secrets. 
They're smaller chips with the question mark on them. You're going to mix those up. You're going to place those out on the board. You place two minor chips at every location on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to fill the market with items. Uh, in the market, you're going to have keys. You're going to have backpacks. And you're going to have crowns. And the crowns go in descending order, so 10, 9, 8. So the first person to take one will get 10 points, 9 points, and 8 points respectively. Everything in the market costs 7 gold. The next thing you're going to do is put out the monkey tokens. So you have three monkey tokens here, and, the, and their pictures are represented on the board. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to set aside these master tokens. And these tokens are for anybody who escapes the dungeon during the game actually gets a master token they're worth 20 points the next thing you're going to do is you're going to place all the gold out uh, on the board so that everybody can get to it you're going to place the dragon token on the board based on the number of players I'm going to do an example of a two-player game so here's the dragon at the two-player spot you're going to get the black clank tokens and the game comes with 24 black clank tokens and you're going to put them in the dragon bag it comes with a bag um, and you're going to put all those 24 tokens into the bag to start the game the next thing you're going to do is you're going to place the goblin monster out right there that goblin monster is a single card and he never goes away you can always attack the goblin the next thing you're going to do is you're going to shuffle the market deck and you're going to place out six cards into the market and so as you can see we have one two three four and a couple off the screen five and six so there's always six cards in the market um, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to give each player a pawn and they're going to put their pawn up here at the top at the starting location of the dungeon and then you're going to select your first player the book says you select the sneakiest player to go first but you could roll a dice or you can use some other kind of random way to create the first player. You're also going to give each player their clank tokens. So this is the red player and I've given him his clank tokens and this is the yellow player and, and their clank tokens. You also give each player a starting hand of cards. So in the starting hand they're going to have six burgle cards, one scramble card, one sidestep card, two stumble cards. The players are going to mix up their decks of starting cards and they're each going to draw five cards. This five cards is going to be their starting hand. Now the object of the game is to take your pawn, move down into the dungeon, get a, an artifact. You can only get one artifact once you have an artifact, then you can continue to get treasure if you would like. But once somebody decides that they're done getting treasure and they leave the dungeon with their artifact, that person gets a master token worth 20 points. And then that player no longer takes their turn as normal. They actually start moving through this area here. This area here is going to instigate the dragon and then eventually kill all the people who are remain in this area of the dungeon. So if somebody is out here then the people who are still in the depths of the dungeon, so below this green line here is the depths of the dungeon, anybody who's still in the depths of the dungeon needs to get above ground. Okay? If you're in the depths of the dungeon and one player reaches this mark on the track, then everybody in the depths of the dungeon dies. If you're in the castle when the person reaches this point, you are knocked out but you do not die. You do not receive a master token because you did not exit the castle, but you still get to count your points at the end of the game. So let's look at what a sample game turn would look like. So I've drawn my five cards and in my five cards I have received two stumbles, two burgles, and one sidestep. You must play all the cards that you get on your turn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my stumbles. My stumbles are not good. That means I've stumbled around in the castle or the depths and I've made a lot of noise. And when I make noise, I run the possibility of stirring up the dragon. So I'm going to take two of my clank because I had two stumbles. 
and I'm going to put my clank in this location on the board right there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my burgles. I have two